have all the supplies for March. Just keep talking so. with them. Like, man, it's like, fail. Like, if, if you have to, he, he goes in his own head sometimes. He's just like, I got this. I'll make it come. Mm -hmm. got good people. <laughs> That's what Mike said about him, too, actually. Yeah. I was talking to Mike. I went over to upload a video with him two weeks ago. And I was talking to Mike for a couple of minutes. Yeah. He's like, you know, he's like, Brock does this. He's like, it's normal when you're Dude's in Dude's a position. workhorse. Oh, yeah. But, like, I mean, one of the talents is like, all right, team. Right. Everybody come out. Exactly. Yeah. But, dude, from, from here, it's all up. It's all up. Very balls. Have we got our boxes in yet? They come in tomorrow, I think. The newest Horizon. ones? The newest ones. From where? Horizon is shipping them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dude, those are going to be sick. Yeah, that's going to be a great time. Uh, have you met Campbell Condit? Okay, have we gone live yet? Yeah. We are live. Oh, good. How long have we been live? Yeah, three, four minutes. Okay. But everybody heard you say, I'm coming over for dinner. So. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> All eight people. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you guys are just like, like 250 people right now. They actually, I was, it matters now. Back when we were, it was so okay, cool. Have we gone live yet? Yeah. It's huge. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're live. Sorry we're late, you guys. You, it's madness. <laughs> it's been madness. Tell them the story. Tell them the story. Okay. I'm glad you guys are here. Part Thank you. <laughs> Here's Al. I drove here. Al drove here. <laughs> emergency. <laughs> emergency drive. Wait, can they hear you? Yeah, no, I'm allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not accused of whispering, but emergency 703. Yeah. I walk into Sarah's house. She says, did Keenan get a hold of you? They don't have Not a key. me, Sarah. His sister, Sarah. My sister, Sarah. And I said, no, I haven't heard from anybody. <laughs> I slagged Brock or Keenan, and I'm like, dude, do you need it? And he's like, yeah, I'll come out and get it. I'm like, it's 7.05. <laughs> I should come in. Let me come in. So I hit the road. Negative whatever. Ice everywhere. Ice everywhere. Blood and urine all over the place. <laughs> it was like a delivery room no as I come racing in here. And I... <laughs> they did so it turns out Sarah found the key. It was I fine. Found, it was okay. fine. It's not a big deal. I, found, I did it. <laughs> so you guys, oh, so good. we're doing our Valentine challenge in our Facebook group. And I was just working today. We had meetings. I was doing all of this stuff. And then I see a comment saying, where's our challenge for day two for a Valentine's challenge? And my, I, I just went like, oh, no. So at 6 p.m., <laughs> I go and I get it all ready and I post it. And I'm like, okay, great. It's 6.45. And Keenan's like, Sarah, I don't have my key. I gave it to somebody else to get into the store. And I'm like, I don't know where my key is. <laughs> and so we're calling everybody we know trying to get in. And then... My husband's here, he's gonna paint with me, and he is walking behind me to our car, everything is covered in ice, and he slips because our neighbor's dog Attack. knocked him over. He hits his head, and I'm trying to talk to him, and he's like dizzy, and I'm like, Keenan, I don't have a key, it's 7.05, I think Michael has a concussion. <laughs> it's madness. But the show must go on. But the show go must on. go on. <laughs> We're here. We're only. Michael's gonna paint a blurry octopus. Michael's painting, and we will see if he has a concussion. I guess by how his painting turns out. <laughs> and on that note. And on that note. Thank you. Hi. Okay. Hi. <laughs> uh, let me get colors. So just give us a second to set up here. Did you get yourself a little phone stand? Somebody sent that to me. Because <laughs> I kept on using a tape, like, circle thing, and so somebody mailed me a phone stand. My mic is still not working, but I'm not going to worry about it. I know exactly what it is. Yeah. Trying to be lazy. Well, I did check his pupils. They seem okay. He is feeling a little dizzy. <laughs> is it possible to get like a part concussion? I don't know. Partial concussion? Oh, I heard myself. You heard yourself? Hello, everyone. I'm also here. It's easier to make the picture look pretty if you don't put it on video mode, but video mode doesn't transmit audio. I don't know what I'm saying. Did I say that right? Oh. Babe, I wasn't listening to you. <laughs> 
sorry. I was. That makes sense. Okay. Mine isn't traced. I think we're good. Yeah, you need to trace yours. Okay. There you go. I think we should finally get this thing, get this thing going. Okay. Welcome everybody tonight to Let's Make Art. I'm so sorry that we started off late. Um, I hope you guys kind of heard the story of why we are a little bit late, but thank you for waiting. Everyone seems to be okay. Help me keep an eye on this guy as we're, <laughs> as we're painting. Uh, we are using uh, three colors tonight. We're using black and Tahoe blue and amethyst. And we do have an outline for this project. So if you have the subscription box or the kit, it should be in there. If you don't have those yet, which is a possibility, you can download them for free off of our website. Just go to the octopus, octopus <laughs> kit page, <laughs> find the outline, press print, and you can uh, trace along with us. Um, so for colors, all we're essentially using is a blue and a purple and a black. So those are the three colors. So whatever brand or whatever kind you're using, just use those three, or it's your painting. You can switch out the colors. You can make your octopus orange or red or whatever you want. Um, we have, let me see how many steps we have. We have six steps to this octopus. So our very first step, we are going to do the body wash on the top. We're gonna to fill in the entire thing. Uh, step number two, we are going to do the shadows. Step number three, we're going to do the soft, like a light wash on the bottom of our appendages. Yeah? Yeah, and our, oh, and, and no, arms, 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 or arms or appendages. They're called arms. Arms. Yeah, they don't have bones in them though. Arms. And uh, step number four, <laughs> we're gonna do the eyes. Step number five, we are going to do the suckers. And step number six, we're gonna do those finishing details. Honey, will you hand me that octopus? So, if you've never used graphite paper before, I'm gonna show you really quick how to use it. Do you mind taking? So, if you have your outline, thank you, my love. Mm -hmm. I've already traced mine, but I'll go over how to use it. Uh, Kathy asked where we can find the outline. Just go to our website, find the octopus kit. It's there as a printable. You're gonna take it and you're gonna tape it down to your watercolor paper. And the reason why you wanna tape it down is while you're tracing, Sometimes it moves in that way. It just stays in one spot, so everything's lined up. I use painter's tape to paint it, but you can use glossy tape. And then you take your graphite paper. There's like a regular side and a dark side. You're gonna put your graphite paper dark side down, and then you're gonna start drawing. Now, if you press hard, then the graphite line is gonna show up really, really dark on your paper. So try and do a really light pressure a drawing of it and then that way your lines aren't as dark and the reason why we don't want them super dark is watercolor is transparent so you will see those pencil lines through the paint I've done this with you I think this is my fourth or fifth time and mm -hmm. every time I'm like press lighter Michael <laughs> and every time I just jab at it and it's like sharpie almost it's super dark well you can always check it too so a good thing that I like to do is I'll like draw it and then check it and if it's too dark then I know to lighten up Another thing is you can use like a felt tip marker, which is naturally going to be a soft point, and then it will just um, trace naturally compared to like a pencil or a ballpoint pen. That is mine. Those are yours. Okay. Uh, somebody asked, what's the advantage of graphite paper over tracing with a light table? So uh, I do have a light table, you can use one of those too. The advantages of a light table is you won't have pencil lines, which is always a good thing if that bothers you. Um, the reason why I like graphite paper is it's a little bit easier for me to um, pay attention to the changes. So like with a light box, you can get the outside shape really well, but if you're trying to like copy the highlights and the darks, like the details and the sharp edges. I've noticed that for me it's a little bit harder to capture those using a light table, like paying attention where those are exactly. So that's why I like the graphite paper. But you can use whatever you feel comfortable using. I feel like watercolor paper is a tad thick. It is. It's like hard to get light to come through. Well you can still use it. Watercolor paper you can still use with a light box. I've used it with a light box and my light table before, but it is a little bit thicker. Sorry, I'm talking a million miles a minute because we were <laughs> starting late and I got, <laughs> woo. Okay, this is my husband, Michael. He's painting with us tonight. He fell earlier on ice, 
So keep an eye on him. I'm really afraid he has a concussion. Please watch. If he just starts to like lean over or something, you know, let me know. I think I'm okay. You seem to be perking up right after it was a little scary. <laughs> and then we have Keenan. He's doing our video. Sweet Kiki. Sweet Kiki. You'll hear him in the back. He'll tell me what cameras to look at and all of that fun stuff. Okay. I went over the colors. Brushes we are using around six and around two. So those two guys, and then we have our three paint colors. And before we get started, we need to do our oath. So if you can raise your hand and repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise, I promise to be, to kind, be kind to myself. myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise I not to compare, not to my, compare work. my work. And I promise to have fun. I, I promise, promise to, have, to fun. have fun. Thank you. Before Sarah was a painter, we took a watercolor class together at a community college. It's true. And so I always feel competitive with her, even though she's like so much better than me. It's not about who's better. <laughs> she's so much better than me, it makes me sad. We started this journey together. We did, we took our first watercolor class together. And uh, can you hand me those papers over there for scratch paper? I've never been good. My secret, I used to just drink like three or four Red Bulls before class and listen to death metal really loud and headphones and just paint. <laughs> and it turned out. You know what? His self-portrait he did in that class was amazing. Yeah. I'll have to show you. Out of like 30 I paintings I did, that was the good So one. good. 30 paintings. <laughs> okay, we're going to start with our warm-ups here. What size? Six. So the first thing we are going to practice is the value of a color. So with watercolor, you have the color that comes out of the tube or the bottle or whatever color. If you want to lighten it, you just add water to it. And that, if you're used to other paint, is a little counterintuitive because we're used to using white paint to lighten a color. But with watercolor, you don't need to do that. You let the water, the white of the paper do the work, which I think is so fabulous. So we're just going to practice the different levels of value. So um, when you dip your brush in, you're going to hit it off the side of your cup a couple of times because you never want to go straight from your cup brush right to the paper because this is too much water. If you're if it's dripping off your paintbrush like this, too much. So hit it off the side a couple of times. And then I want you to pick up a color, any color you want. That is the best color. What is that? What is this called? Is it one of these? It is no, it's um amethyst. That's a solid color. And you're going to have more paint than water on this. So this is a dark value and it's dark because um, it's not as transparent in watercolor. Does that make sense? So the color is nice and dark. <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading these comments. <laughs> They're really concerned about you. honey. <laughs> They're like, if he does this, we'll keep an eye out. Okay, now to get a medium value, I rinse my brush once. I'm going to hit it off the side a couple of times and then I'm going to lay that color down. So already, even though this is the same pink color, we have a lighter color already. And that's just from one rinse. Now to get an even lighter value, you're going to rinse your paintbrush a lot. So it's going to be like almost a barely there color. Still tapping on the side of the cup. Still tap on the side of the cup after you pick up. Yep. Exactly. Very nice. This is my favorite paint color. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Purple is his favorite color, so. Now. Like a blue purple. Yeah. Blue. Now you can go even, so here's Michael's three values. He could probably even go more. So if you can even go more and really lighten up that color, keep on going until it's like water pretty much. And sometimes when you get to that point, you're essentially just using the color of the water, which I, which I do, I think even your paint water can act. Now mine's pretty light here, so I don't know if I'll get lighter than that. Yeah, very nice. So then when we're painting this, we'll probably, we're gonna start off doing kind of more of like a medium value for our body wash. And then when we do our layers and stuff, we're gonna wanna use darker values. And underneath the arms of the octopus, we're gonna use this really, really light wash. So just keep that in mind as we're painting this, the different levels of value and using that in your painting. Now there's one more thing I wanna do, and that is I just want to show you how to do another layer on top. So 
My medium value here is mostly dry. Now I'm not gonna do my dark value here because it still has a sheen to it, which means it's wet. So I'm gonna use my mostly dry middle layer, middle value, and I just picked up some blue, and I'm just gonna layer across half of it. And this is just to illustrate how transparent watercolor can be and how when you layer colors and values like this, you get depth and dimension to what you're painting. It's super cool. It's a great thing about watercolor. It's sometimes frustrating because you can't really hide your mistakes. Like with acrylic or oil, it's thick. You can paint over it. It's opaque. You don't see through it. Watercolor, you see through it, but we can use that to our advantage and really kind of layer up those colors. You're great at this. Thank you. <laughs> so nice. He's always this nice. I don't think he's concussion. <laughs> Not okay. just for the camera. <laughs> So, um, she hates me. It wasn't, I didn't slip. <laughs> now, the last thing we're going to practice before we go into our octopus is I want you to grab your round two brush and I just want you to get used to making thin, small marks because we are going to do our suckers that way. So, I want you to grab your brush, get it wet, hit it off the side so it's not too wet, pick up some color, any color you want, and I just kind of want you to practice making these thin, curved lines. I want two heights of table. Sorry. Yeah, you're kind of in between there. Like little smiley faces? Yeah, like little smiley faces or little dashes. Even maybe try practicing making like some circles. Now, if you want to keep it a thin line, you're going to want a more vertical hold. So your paintbrush is going to be kind of more up and down and you're just going to use the tip to do nice thin lines. So kind of just get used to that motion. Are these going to be sucker bottoms? What are these? Yeah, these are going to be sucker bottoms. Exactly. Somebody said they're drowning in snow in Wisconsin. Yeah, this weather is nuts right now, you guys. I can't even. I was talking to my boss today. We both have children at the same school. And this month, our kids have gone to school, I think, six days. Well, it's now the middle of February. Since the beginning of the Since year. Since the beginning of the year. I think our kids year. have gone to school like six days. Yeah. It's been what? so Crazy many snow here. days. It's madness. Yeah. Okay. It's like every night we get a text. It's like school's canceled. School's canceled because like, it's so icy. It's super dangerous outside. It's the greatest. But here we are. Okay, we're going to do one more um, technique before we get started. And this one is super fun. It's one of my favorites. I want you to get a dark or medium value wash. So use your six, get it kind of wet, pick up some paint, whatever color your heart desires. And I want you to do kind of a rectangle. And this is between like a darker or medium value. And then I want you to rinse your brush and use only water and drop in some water in that area. And wherever you drop in water, it's going to push that color to the outside. It's going to do some really cool things. Super fun to do. And we, you can use this technique just to, I like doing this to add texture in large spaces. So if I'm looking at my octopus here, I have some different like watercolor like blooms and different textures going on and it's just because I like to drop in water or color in some spaces and it's let it do its thing it's gonna move but it's gonna create some really cool lights and darks in there all right check them off so I know it's bad to leave your brushes in your cup yes like overnight yes can I leave them hang out while we're painting or is that a no-no I would you do not want to leave your brushes while you're painting because like Say for our warm-ups, we used our two and we leave it in there during the entire painting. This is such a small bristle, it will start to bend. So even when you're painting, if you're not using your brush, just keep it on your paper towel on the side. Okay, great question. All right, let's get started with our actual octopus. We're gonna start with step one and we are just going to do a wash on the body of our octopus. Now there are some spots that are kind of on the head, on the back, and these three that I left highlighted, and that's because we're gonna avoid those at first when we're filling in this wash, because those are gonna be like the glare or the highlights on the octopus. 
because it's wet. All right, so avoid the three on his crown. Yes, avoid the three on his crown. You six in or two in? I'm six in because I'm using a large space. I'm going to mix my blue with a little bit of purple, but you can make it whatever color you want. Like yellow? Well, like we don't have yellow right. here. Right. If you have yellow. No, I want, okay. no, I want blurple. <laughs> blurple. Okay. <laughs> So I'm just going to start by filling in. I'm also going to avoid the eye area. This is the scariest part for me. Like well, the first stroke. The first stroke? Yeah, I don't know why. I'm just like, well, it's ruined now. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, get going. It works out. So I'm just going to... And then what I like to do is I like to pick up color, put it in, and then I use water to kind of spread that color out. Now, naturally, what that's going to do is going to create a lighter value as I spread it out, which is not really a big deal. It's kind of cool. And then if there's ever an area that's too light of a value, you can always just do another layer on top of it. This is coming out really purple, but that's okay. They can uh, change color. Octopus can change color? Yeah, and texture. They can change texture? Yeah, they have like super active camouflage. Okay, I have to tell you guys something. I requested my husband be on this live tonight because he knows a lot of information about octopuses. <laughs> and I have a biology degree. He does have a biology <laughs> so. degree. <laughs> so he was, he went off the other night about like the different facts about octopuses, like seriously for probably about 20 minutes I would say. <laughs> And I was just like, that's amazing. You have to be on the live because <laughs> I'm amazing. not going to remember any of this information. <laughs> that is amazing. So they change texture like they can have. Yeah. So let's start from the beginning here. We were talking about brains and animals. And uh, like two thirds of an octopus's neural tissue reside in their arms, which means that an octopus can use its brain to send problems into the arms. So like in one arm can be in charge of cracking something while the other arm is in charge of searching for a hide. So an octopus can like allocate different problems to different arms and they're able to do them by themselves. Holy cow. Which is so cool, right? <laughs> I always felt bad for, well, we love sushi. And like, <laughs> I've always felt bad for octopi right, because like, yeah, they're so intelligent. Like I was telling Sarah that like, here, they figure out complex puzzles because they're able to allocate their brain power so much. Oh, I'm like too quiet. I don't know. Can you hear him good? Yeah, yeah I can hear him. Anyways, okay. the only reason essentially we're not run by octopus is because they don't have any way to communicate with each other. So like one generation of octopus learns all of these amazing things, but they don't have a way to tell their babies. So they die and they can't like further themselves. Don't laugh at me. I'm not laughing. I have to pause you. <laughs> I have to pause you because I saw you doing this, but you were telling your story, so I didn't want to interrupt you. We're leaving the bottom of the arms white. Oh. Sorry, you guys. I thought you said the crown holes. Well, the crown holes and the bottom of the tentacles. If you colored them in, it's not a big deal. Let me show you what you can do. And the reason why we're leaving them white is because we're going to do them with a lighter wash later on. So what you can do if you colored them in here is you can lighten them up. Watercolor you can't totally erase, but you can lighten. So if I take my damp brush and I wet the area that I want to lighten, I'm just gonna get it nice and wet. And then I'm going to take my paper towel and wherever that water went, it lightened it up fairly well. That works pretty good. So don't stress if this happened, honey. I'm sorry I had to I saw it happening, but I didn't want to be rude, so I'm like, wait, wait. <laughs> so I'm just going to lighten this up, and then just take your paper towel and suction up that area, and it should lighten it. I think you have my brush. I do have your brush. Okay. They're asking if they can get a credit for biology for watching tonight's paint along. <laughs> Probably, though marine animals were not my expertise. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say. I'm gonna go ahead and say, yeah, you can. I'm qualified to do that. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Go ahead and tell your professors that some guy on the internet said that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, the other thing that I'm doing as I'm filling this in, and you can kind of see it right here, is I dropped in some water droplets, so I'm getting some cool texture and variation on the body of my octopus. Now, if you're not into that look, <laughs> you don't have to do it. This is your painting. If you like a really, really smooth um, wash where there's not a lot of darks and lights or those kind of bloom things, then don't do that part. But I love it, and I love it because it makes it unique. I think it makes it visually interesting, and it's just, it's a way to make it your own because you can't really replicate those things. You have to do it while it's wet though. If you, tr if you try and do it when the wash is already dried, then it will not show up. Or it'll just take like a really long time to dry. Cause it's like a, a drop. You, get, you guys get what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just doing the top part of the arms here. Now we do want to keep the top parts of the arms fairly dark and like a dark or medium value. And that's because we want it to be clear the difference between the top and the bottom of these arms. An easy way to do that is to change the value and to lightly like kind of change the color because we want it to be clear. This is the top part of the arm. This is the bottom part. So if we just do that by changing the value of those two things, it becomes really obvious to our viewer um, what's going on. So if you have to do a couple layers for the arms to make sure they're darker than the bottom part of the arms, that's okay. Yours is giving me like a real Ursula vibe with that purple. Yeah, Ooh, it's Ursula. good, Ursula. Dated her in high school. You dated Ursula? <laughs> no, but <personality laughs> someone, type. someone like her. <laughs> You know who you are. <laughs> uh, you're funny. That is funny. It's the concussion. <laughs> it's the concussion. He's usually not this funny. <laughs> okay, and we have that back tentacle. Tenta no, tentacle. back arm. That's right, they're not tentacles. Because they're not tentacles. So anyways, back to this like nerve bundles in their arms thing. So like, let's say they decide to make one arm, they're running away from something, right? Okay. And they decide like, okay, I need to escape this guy. So they'll say like, okay, arm one, you're in charge of finding an escape. Long story short, because their eyes are so complicated, they can give that arm access to the eyes while also still using their eyes. And that arm can independently while they're running away, use the eyeballs to look for a way to get away also. Isn't they're that amazing. amazing? Cephalopod eyes, okay, this is getting real nerdy. And, <laughs> and I wanna inform the viewer that we were laying in, it was a cold winter night. <laughs> Sarah and I are cuddled up in bed, just about to fall asleep, and I just started off with octopus facts, and she was laughing at me. And she was like, you have to come on. Anyways, I'm always amazed at eyes of octopi because they're these things called cephalopod squids and octopi and all these things. Their eyes evolved independently of everything else's eyes. Their eyes evolved two times. Everything and cephalopods. So like, I, I think they're aliens, man. I don't know. <laughs> they're crazy. Press one to subscribe to Octopus Facts. <laughs> Press one. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Daily updates. Uh, okay. I filled in, <laughs> I filled in my octopus body. We did step one, you guys are doing awesome. We're going to do step two. We assume you're doing awesome. No, you are doing awesome. It could be doing great. That's, I mean, is awesome better than great? I don't know, it's longer than great. That's true. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know, I just don't know right now. We've got <laughs> octopus facts and- We have all the information. Assign it to an arm. Have it process that, it get out. back to me. Smile there we go. There. <laughs> I wish you guys can see Keenan so bad. He's flailing. He's flailing his back Just arm, arm. doing another working. task. Okay, are these dark enough? Yeah, that looks great. And then if you're not sure yet, when you do your, um, when we do our bottom washes on the tentacles, if we lay it down and you're like, you know, the, I can't really tell the difference, you can at that moment darken the top part of your tentacles. So this isn't the last time we're gonna touch these arms. I keep on saying tentacles arms or the wash. We can always do layers, so don't stress. Okay. Oh, they said they're really appreciating all these, all the nerd talk so much. Mariella said she's a biologist and she's appreciating it. <laughs> Sarah 
<laughs> I'm sure it gets so annoyed at me because I, I don't get annoyed, but it takes me a long time to process information. So sometimes he just like comes at me with facts and I'm seriously sitting there like trying to absorb it all. But I appreciate it. Okay, we're moving on to shadows, you guys. Shadow. Focus. <laughs> okay. So basically right underneath the eyeballs and kind of on like the parts where the tentacles are meeting kind of in between, we're gonna put some shadow and depth there. And the reason why we do it behind the eyeballs is because we wanna make it clear that the eye parts on the oct octopus are sticking out. And the best way to make something pop out and something to recede is in order to make it received, you give it a darker value, and to make something pop out, you give it a lighter value. And if you want anything to have kind of three dimension or form, you need to have that value change. So. I'm gonna mix a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of black in with my colors. And I'm gonna put in the darker value. So it's gonna go kind of in between. I kind of outlined it on the outline. So it's gonna go above and below. And then once I put down the shadow, I rinse my brush. And then I'm gonna blend this out. And the reason why we wanna blend it out is because since we're using an outline, we don't want it to feel blocky or like a coloring book. Don't follow those outlines that we have for you exactly and only stay within those lines because that's not a natural transition. So you put the color down and then you're gonna softly blend out using a damp brush. Do I blend into the eye or just blend outward? Blend away from the eye. So you're gonna avoid the eye area completely. That beautiful cephalopod eye. That beautiful cephalopod eye that What's the word? Um, adapted? Evolved twice. Evolved twice on its own, separate from all of the other eyes. Also, pit organs and snakes and wings. <laughs> all of those things. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now we also have some shadows, and you can see it on the outline here. There's gonna be a shadow on this far arm here, right underneath the head. There's this area outlined in this front arm and then this right here too. So just here. And if you kind of covered up your outlined areas, it's not a big deal, just kind of eyeball it. You guys can look at the reference photo and kind of look at where those shadows are. Don't stress. Okay, is this something that's uh, time sensitive? Like I want to blend each one before I do the other webbing? So I just get all the webbings done and then I paint fairly quickly so I feel comfortable putting my shadows in at once and then paint and then blending them out but if you if it takes you a while to do it then I would paint one blend it out paint another blend it out because the longer the paint watercolor stays on the paper the harder it is to blend it out without getting a line so for me because I paint quickly I feel comfortable kind of moving from one to another but if you aren't a paint goddess. You just <laughs> if you're not time. used to watercolor painting, you take a little bit longer time. There's nothing wrong with that. Just do one at a time. So then that way that line should blend out pretty smooth. And then now what we're going to do also is these white areas that we kind of avoided. I'm going to take my damp brush and I'm just going to do a little swoop. Just like one swoop across these areas that we've been avoiding. You can even leave a little white part on a couple of them. Now we don't wanna go back and forth too much. If we go back and forth too much, then the paint is gonna even out and we're gonna get rid of that highlight that we're trying to keep. Sharon, thank you for staying up. She said she can't keep her eyes open anymore because she's in the UK and it's almost 2 a.m. there. Oh. But <laughs> thank you Sharon, for tuning in. Sharon, go to sleep. you're so great. You go to bed now. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Michael, they're loving these facts. I'm so glad you're here. I'm really glad. I'm having a hard time shutting up because I just want to be like, you know what else is fun? <laughs> I think so far people are okay with it. If they start to turn on us, I'll tell you. There have also been a couple people on YouTube who have said they're also biologists and to say hello. Oh, God, it's so good to hear you. <laughs> so He's like, my people. I live in Hamilton, Missouri. It's just a small town. They are not a biology-centered place. Well, because it's a tiny town. There's, there's like, like ten people here. There's it's like a, it's a great town. It's, it's a, a great town. And they love you. It's a great town. Tina it's just it's very small. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, so we have our shadows. 
Um, remember, we can always go back and layer more, so don't stress. Now, if an area is wet and you keep on trying to layer it and get darker and it's not getting darker, wait for it to dry and then do another layer on top. So sometimes the best thing to do is just to leave it alone if you're starting to get frustrated. Okay. Now we are going to move on to step three. We're gonna do that soft bottom wash on the bottom of these arms. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use my six and I'm actually going to use a soft light, like maybe a little bit more purple color than I did for my body. Periwinkle. Periwinkle or like a lilac actually, I'd mm, say. That's, that was my other guess, <laughs> a lilac. <laughs> And make sure you mix some water into this one so it's a really nice wash on your palette. Just nice and light. And then I'm just gonna go along and put that nice light wash on the bottom of these arms. So that light wash compared to that darker wash at the top, it's really obvious now to our viewer. That's the bottom and that's the top of the arm. Would you like to know why else we are not currently bowing to the octopi overlords? Yes, why aren't we bowing to the octopus? I don't need to say overlords. Please. Overlords. <laughs> um, they die after they have babies, males and females. So males just like go off into seclusion and die. That's boring. But the females like are so obsessed with the safety of their eggs, which they have like 400,000 at a time, which is nuts. They have 400,000 babies at a time? Yeah. yeah. Well, a lot of baby octopi die Okay. Because they're like very tasty, I guess. I don't Aww. know. And they like float around in like a pink cloud. They're called larval. Aww. And uh, anyways, they have a lot of them. But the mother octopus is so worried about her babies that she watches them and starves to death. Holy cow. Yeah. So like not only, I just feel like so many problems would be solved if octopi had like some form of sign language because like if one mother survived and was able to tell her babies, look, you can eat while these eggs are hanging out. Like it's when you fine. become a mama. When you become a mama, it would start the cycle of octopi intelligence. But because they, they can only live, like some octopi live six months. The big ones live for five years. They like, there are no old, no old octopus. So it's, That's so a, sad. it's a bummer for them because they're That's so intelligent. Sad. They just want to make sure their babies live so they don't go and eat. Maybe they don't have motivation to live, because that's a lot of kids to live. Maybe they don't have motivation to live. I made a mistake. <laughs> what am I doing? How am I going to take care of so, them? That's it. Starting to death. Dude, this one's good, too. Take this one. I mean, it's not funny, but it's kind of fun. Like, the mom, like, hangs out and washes the eggs and dies. And the dad's just, like, later and just dies out in the wild. It's I don't know so why. so sad. He doesn't need to die. He's like, I'm done. <laughs> My octopus, job here is done. He drinks himself to death at the octopus bar. <laughs> Okay, so we have the bottom of our washes in. This is a good time to kind of pay attention to the different values you have going on on your arms. If they're too close together, then do another layer on top of the top part of the arm to kind of make those values clear. <laughs> Laurel said, don't encourage the octopi to get smarter, they will definitely take over. <laughs> They will. They could. They could. They would assign two arms to taking over humanity <laughs> and we'd be dead. This is legitimately multitask. Okay. Seriously. Oh, I want to show you guys something. So uh, it looks like I got my hand or wrist in paint. So I have some little purple soft things over here. So, sorry, I got to get in oh. here. So, this is a family show. what we're going to do is if you guys have a magic eraser at home, you can lighten up or kind of slightly erase watercolor marks. So if you take a magic eraser and try and get clean water, I don't have clean water, but his is cleaner than mine. You're gonna pick up some water and you are going to just softly rub where these marks, marks are on your paper, softly. If you do it hard, the paper will start to disintegrate. So I just softly kind of erase those marks and they're gone. Magic erasers, the Mr. Clean Magic Erasers, have those handy. Okay, how are you doing? I like it. You're doing great. I made like a weird beak here, it got too wet. That's all right. You have some great textures going on. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, now we are going to move on to the eyes. So, I want you to actually move to your round two. 
which is our smaller one. And that's just because we're working in a smaller area and it's easier to do smaller things with a smaller brush. I think this is just coming from a non paint queen uh -huh. that you should name the sizes. Like this should be like a Keith. A Keith. And this should be a Becky. I 100% agree. Cause like <laughs> we round should name two, our brushes. Like go, go ahead and grab We've Keith. Got Gary over here <laughs> on the left side. And Keith is going to be helping us. It just oh my makes gosh. It no. So much better. You're a hundred percent right. Thank you. I'm just going to think, I'm, I want you to think of good. I want round two to be Keith. He just seems like a Keith. Okay. <laughs> Keith. And then what's a big sturdy name for like Brock. Richard? <laughs> Brock. Brock. <laughs> I don't know. That's kind of weird. A big sturdy name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to take our. Bubba. Bubba. No. We're going to take our Keith, our round two, our tiny little guy. Fried shrimp. And shrimp gumbo. We're picking up some paint. And I'm going to color in uh, wait, my... What did you pick up? I didn't see. What? Here. Light bottom of tentacle color. Yeah. Lighter value color. Now there is a tiny circle within this eyeball. Avoid that tiny itty bitty circle. Itty bitty. And we're going to just color this in using that lighter wash. And both of them. There's two eyes, so get both of them. They can also grow Brutus. Back. Brutus. Brutus. No, I think like a round 10 or a round 16 is Brutus. Brutus is a little too heavy for round six. What's in between Brutus and Keith? Not combine them, because I couldn't combine them. Nothing good. Breathe. Breathe. No, Brutus. that's not it. Breathe. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to do the other eye. Like Mildred. that. No. Oh. Sorry. You just know. You like hear it and you're like, no or yes. It's a sturdy chick name, you know. Evan? Somebody said Evan? I think Evan's Evan's a four or six. Yeah. Evan is a round four. That's a great name for a round four if you have that. Keith, Evan. George? George? I like Georgie. I like Richard. Richard. Richard? No. Okay, let's ponder on this more. Let's keep on painting. So. Keenan? <laughs> no. <laughs> Keenan's not a round six. Keenan's, Keenan's a, fine, a liner too. Keenan's no, I'm just a kidding. fine liner. <laughs> I'm just a little dainty. <laughs> okay. We have people putting in names. We got Bertha, George, Greg, Carl, Oliver. Oliver is a sweet baby name. We talked about that. Oliver is a sweet baby name. <laughs> Brunhilda, Edith, <laughs> Thor. Oh, Brunhilda. <laughs> Brunhilda is good. Barbara. Have you seen Ponyo? It's the story of Brunhilda. Yes. Yeah. One. Okay, now Four. for the eyes. It's a house paintbrush. Walter, six. Hank. Hank. Hank is a six for sure. Whoever is Hank, Hank the that's six? A, that's a good one. Yeah. Susan. Hank and Bobby. We got Keith and Hank. Does that sound right? <laughs> that's nice. Okay, Hank is our round six. Keith is our round two. Keith People. And Ken. <laughs> Rita said Keenan is a detail brush. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, touche. Now. The next thing that we are going to do on our eyeballs, so we did our nice lighter wash. Now on the top part, and I kind of have it outlined, we are going to do another layer on top. And the reason for this is because even the round part of this eyeball has a value change. So as it's going away from us, if the light is kind of coming right here, the top part would be shadowed. So we're gonna do another layer of value right at the top, so it should hopefully darken that top part we're not gonna go all the way around the eye. It's just like the top half of it. Ooh, somebody said Houston. Someone also said John? Cameron. Cameron? No, Cameron is a little bit lighter, I think. Agnes, Andrew. Agnes, it reminds Ralph. Me of Matilda. <laughs> Max. Oh, yeah, Matilda. No, I like Hank because I feel like Hank is like a worker. Like I was thinking Keith and Ken when it first came out. No, no, Ken reminds me of Barbie. Yeah, me too. Yeah, he's like a perfect six, you know? A perfect six. <laughs> On a scale of one to six, that's perfect. <laughs> okay. Right, cool. So I'm just kind of doing that darker value around the top. Keenan missed me. I did. It's kind of funny how, too, when people say these names, you associate them with people you know. Yeah. Like somebody said Houston, and I know a Houston, but he... He's a brick. He is a very tall, large... He was a Viking. He's a gentle yeah. giant, but he is a giant. And so I'm like, no, Houston is like... 
around 20. I wanted to befriend Houston because I've always wanted to know what it would feel like to be cradled. Like, he, he could cradle Michael. Like, I remember holding my babies being like, this would feel so nice. And I was just thinking, I have to befriend Houston. <laughs> he could make my dreams happen. That's the Houston we know. <laughs> Houston, if you're listening, Houston, here for you. <laughs> we're, Michael's ready for you to cradle him. Okay. He's also a therapist of some sort. That'd be just so great. He is. He's a counselor. A <laughs> Michael, tell me your problems. I'm like, what? Okay. All of them. Okay. <laughs> we're moving on to the suction cups. We're moving on to step five. You guys are almost done with this painting. Thank you for staying with us. We kind of got off topic a lot. I may a have lot. a concussion. He might Don't have a concussion. Me. Don't let him fool you. He's always like this. Okay. So we're going to move on to the suction. The suckers is what they're called. Now, I just want to warn you that when we think of octopus suckers, we just think of doing this shape. Which I do often. I know. We always, we're always like, octopus suckers? What are, the, what are those like? Oh, a... So this is how we picture them on the arm, right? But what we have to keep in mind is how our brain sees things is how they would be totally flat and us looking over them. But that's not actually how we see things in person because of perspective and because they're three-dimensional things that are moving, we see sides of them, we see bottoms of them, we see the other side of them. So instead of doing these circles, because these arms, we're seeing the top part and the side, we're really just seeing the side of them. So the shape we're looking for, if these, we flipped them over and put it on its side, would be more like that. More smiley. So a little bit more smiley, but they are going to slightly come off of the arm because they, they're bumpy. If you were to feel them, they're not totally flat with the arm. They kind of come ever? off. Have I ever felt the sucker of an octopus uh -huh. arm? No. Have you? Yeah, at the Monterey Bay Aquarium, you can feel them. Oh. They are disturbing. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a nightmare sponge that can grab you. I don't know. They're weird. I haven't tried to eat one, though. I'm tempted every time we go to Bob Wasabi's. Bob, I'm giving you free publicity. <laughs> You're the best sushi I've ever If you had. want great sushi in Kansas City, Bob Wasabi is the place to go. And you're a sweet man. Okay, we're doing the suckers. <laughs> Sorry. So, when you do these, you're gonna, they're gonna be bigger coming out from closest to the body, and then as you get to the end of the arm, they're gonna get smaller. So you're gonna do it like so. So it's gonna be like, dude, what color? Do, uh, just a darker value. You can do, I'm doing still that mixture of blue. No black though? You can do a tiny bit of black to get it nice and dark. So you're gonna do kind of like this shape. And then as I'm moving across the arm, they're getting smaller. Do you want white gaps? No, you don't want white gaps. Do you? I have a little bit of white gaps in between. Don't stress, if, if they're touching each other, that's okay. If there's a little bit of white gaps in between, that's okay too. We're seeing these at different angles, and so some of them will be kind of layered and some of them will have space. So don't stress either way. So you're just gonna kind of do, 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 all the way to the end there. Now on areas where you, you see more of the underside, like this side, I can maybe even do it on this side. We're gonna layer them. There's gonna be like two rows of them pretty much. So it's gonna be like, do, do, do. And then like this part I see fairly well. So I'm gonna do a double layer right there. You see that? See how they're like? Yeah. But don't do them totally next to each other in pairs. Kind of try and stagger them a little bit. And then it's probably gonna turn into one again at some point and then back to two. Get in. Did you know that octopus have nightmare beaks? Head they up have inside beaks. Of them? Like a sharp parrot style beak. I actually did know that. They're horrifying. One of the several diaphragm things, not diaphragm, diagram <laughs> things that we looked for, uh, facts about octopuses are octopodes. A lot of people have been correcting us. Octopodes? And saying octopodes. Hmm. Octopodes instead of octopuses? Octopi? It's not octopi. We know that. Correct. Octopode. 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 Is that the plural of octopuses? I think it's the original Greek word that octopus is derived from. Okay. As a side note, related to painting, <laughs> I have a question on YouTube uh, <laughs> as to why they can't see your paint tray. And oh. I didn't even think about it. Because I'm stealing it like Because my husband's person. taking it. Is that better? Yep, that's perfect. It's almost the exact same colors as the actual octopus. 
So sorry, sorry guys. <laughs> My husband was pulling his the paint tray closer to him. Also, we started off late <laughs> because of a series of unfortunate events that I really hope you go back to the beginning and listen to because it was madness. Also, if you're interested to see what Al looks like, he made an appearance at the beginning. He did. Sweet sugar Al. Another man who I like to cradle me. Al Doan. <laughs> Al, the invitation's out there. <laughs> Al? <laughs> okay, so I'm just... How big? How tall is that dude? He's 6'7". Like... Oh. Al is 6'7", ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so I'm doing my... Just all the legs. All of the arms. Sorry, I said legs. It's okay. I've been calling them tentacles. We just... Appendages. Appendages. Aren't, like, all G of the things. Giant phalanges. Phalanges. Overlords. <laughs> Overlords. Octopod. You know, I love thinking that there was some Greek guy who just, like, pulled this squirmy thing. It's like, octopod. <laughs> 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 just like the original namings of things is so fun. Also like trying new foods, like an egg, who was like, mm-hmm, that looks good. <laughs> Let me cook that up. I just saw where that I'm going to scramble that up. <laughs> or a mushroom. They're Let's like, just see. Mm-hmm. Oh. It's growing on some good stuff. Let's see that. You bring up some good points. If you have to like turn your paper around so you don't get your arm and what you've already painted, feel free to do that. You're, you know, you can move it around. Am I wanting to make any circle? I, I did a circle, like a suction. That's okay. So like on some of them where you will see, like if, for example, you have an arm that's kind of coming up where you're seeing the back of it, kind of like if this is the back of my hand and I'm doing this, you see the front, you can do circles on there too. So if you're seeing most of the bottom of the arm, you can put circles on there, no problem. But it, like this, I'm kind of seeing it more from the side. This one kind of came up a little bit more like right here, so I could do more circles on this area. <laughs> Kathy says, Regina Phalange. <laughs> if you guys watch Friends, you know exactly. <laughs> Regina Phalange is? Phoebe's like fake name she makes up yes. for the entire yes. 10 right. seasons or That's whatever. Right. I love that show. Who said that? Kathy? Me and you, girl. Okay. Campbell kind of says, you guys are so cute. Uh, I'm thinking about asking her to marry me. Parentheses and Keenan. Wait, what did he say? Parentheses and Keenan. And Keenan. Yes. Keenan, you're cute too. Thanks. You're so Thanks. cute. <laughs> he also says octop a -dees. I don't know. He, I think he did some research. Oct what? I don't know what he's trying to say. He'll have to explain it to us. You'll later. have to explain us more, yeah. but thank you. <laughs> okay, this one I'm going to do a double layer of. Aisha said she's watching Friends right now. Aisha, you're not painting with us, girl. Unbelievable. <laughs> Wait, the Aisha I know about? Yeah, Aisha does our customer service. She is awesome. The so Aisha I know you about. You can watch Friends. Aisha, I'm friends with your husband, kind of. We've met twice. He used your computer a lot. I, I work for your husband's sister. Yes, her yes. sister-in-law. That's how you say it. <laughs> Don't worry for your sister-in-law. That was concussion. <laughs> concussion, <laughs> concussion comment right there. Okay. Okay, my back tentacle looks like a horn. Maybe I need to put some suckers on it. Yeah, put some suckers on it. Also, what can help you, can I actually show that? Because this is a great thing to show. Like a great bad example? No. You're breaking my heart. So he says his looks like a horn. And the reason for that is because there's not a strong difference in value between this arm and this head. Darken up that arm in the back, it's gonna push it farther away. Okay. Does that make sense? So it will be clear that it's separate. Also, like to be safe, because I didn't want these colors to bleed, I left a really thin white line between the head and the arm. You don't have to do that, but if you don't want those colors to bleed together to where they would turn into a value, then leave a little space in between there. Okay, you guys are doing awesome. We're almost done with this. Okay. This is just a practice, then we're gonna do the real thing. Now we're gonna do the real thing, and we're gonna be here for three more hours. <laughs> And it's like, can I go home? Can I go home? <laughs> I have a family. <laughs> Actually, Paula has a question about your tray. Okay, Paula, ask away about She's, my tray. She says, is your tray flat? Mine is not flat and my colors always run to the side. Okay, Paula, my tray is not flat. And it's actually, it bows up so it kind of sticks, what's that? It's Con a dome. Yeah, or what's con convex? Convex. Yes. So 
it's flat on the corners and then in the middle it pops up. So what I do is I put my colors kind of more along the edge and then I pull from them and mix in the middle. Now because usually when you mix colors you're not using a ton of paint, they'll stay right there. Whereas when you're putting colors on your palette there's usually a little pile so you want to put those closer to the edge. They okay. do that on purpose. Yeah, that's, that's not a defect with the tray, that's how it's supposed to be. So you can mix in the middle. So you can mix in the middle and then you can kind of separate and things won't always run to the side. So just put your paints along the side. We just saved Aisha a lot of calls. That was for you, Aisha. Okay. Go back to friends. Now we are going to move on to the very last step. Right? Dun. We're going to finish our eyes and we're going to do any last minute details that we need to do for our octopus. Now, to do these eyes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in these little white circles that we have. However, if I can, I'm going to try and leave a little white dot in the middle of this. So I'm picking up my black. I'm going to start to fill in my eye. Can you get a close up on that? Can yeah. they see? I'm going to start to fill in my eye and then I'm going to leave a tiny little white dot in the middle of the eye. That amazing eye. Now, if you can't do that, don't stress. If you fill it in, it's not a big deal. Our viewer, your viewer will still understand that it's an eyeball. If you do fill it in, you can let it dry and if you have gouache or white paint or the bleed proof white, you can just do a little white dot right in that middle and put that white back in there. My dude looks wonky. Why? He, I don't know. I just feel like he's going like, dang. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great. I don't even, I'm not even, that's so great. All his tentacles are assigned to different tasks currently. <laughs> his eyes are looking at the different things he's doing. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Now, when you do the black part on this far eye, you do want the black part to stick out from the blue part because it is same as our eyeballs, they stick out from our body. You know, if I were to look to the side, the actual shape of my eyeball bulges. Does that make sense? You know, eyes bulge. No. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. everybody's like does. <laughs> A white gel pens would work too. Great, great input, Sally. Okay, so I put in my eyes and then uh -huh. now is the great, you're you okay? You're fine. Now is a perfect time to just look at your octopus and see if there's any other adjustments you need to make before you finish this painting. I think that this is looking great. One thing I do want to do is I'm looking at the shape, the round shape of my eyeballs, like the donut looking guys, if you will. And I want to kind of round out that shape because it got a little wonky when I put in my shadow. So um, I'm actually going to read shape my eyeballs by putting in a darker shadow around the eyes. And I'm just gonna try and round them out a little bit more. So then it's just, so they're more round and not like wavy. Now your eyes might already be totally round and you don't have to do this part. And that's great, don't do it then. So I kind of round those out. And then I'm just going to softly blend it out so it's not such a hard line. What I really want is your voice. <laughs> your voice. <laughs> also, there's going to be a little bit of shadow on the right side of this eye, too. I think my octopus's name is Earl. Earl, that's a good name. Oh. Earl. There used to be the funkiest show on Adult Swim called Squidbillies. <laughs> Did you ever watch Squidbillies? Terrible. show was a nightmare. <laughs> Terrifying. Oh, uh, they're asking why we're doing an octopus in February. Well, <laughs> our entire February box is sea themed. We have a tropical sunset, we have jellyfish, we have sea turtle, we have an octopus. And that is because I just really wish I was in a warm place where there is a beach and see things because it's so, this is my first full winter in Missouri. I can't express to you how cold it is and I just was really you missing. You can, there's actually a temperature scale. You can't. You can't express exactly how cold <laughs> I can't it is. Express I can tell you exactly. In the negatives. In the negatives. In the negatives, everything is literally covered in a sheet of ice. So dangerous. And I just, 
I, I just hope that by painting these, it just channels it. Channels me to a warmer place. The real reason leading scientists believe is that St. Valentine was reincarnated as an octopod. Did you just make that 100%. up? 100%. <laughs> okay. I'm like, there's no way that's true. It's not. <laughs> Don't listen to him. <laughs> he might have been. Okay. You never know. Oh, Mandy just got back from Maui. Uh, you lucky. We lived on Oahu that's for a disgusting. bit. That's disgusting. I lived in Hawaii for a couple of years, and I'm just remembering that warm, fabulous time. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's, get, let's get back to the real world as we're painting here. And I feel, I feel really great about mine. I don't think I need to make any other adjustments. We're done, you guys. Good job. Ooh, ooh. All right, let's show it off. All right. So, wait, let me name mine. John Ralphio. John Ralphio. No, no, no. no. Uh, let's do, I feel like it's uh, Hector. Earl and Hector had on a Earl and Hector had on an adventure. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do our close up. Oh, this is we're close up. We're looking good right now. I think we're vibing. We should we should go on a date or something. No, I'm married. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going back and forth between your pictures and your faces. This is my husband. He's not a creeper. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's not. I am a creeper. He can put also his arm her husband. Me. <laughs> Be both. Bro Broctopus, that's what Susan a said. A Broctopus. <laughs> Susan, oh, so much better than the name. So Broctopus, funny. perfect. Uh, and on that note. And on that note. <laughs> <laughs> so if you painted with us tonight, thank you very much. I know that some of you don't have your February boxes yet, and that truly just breaks my heart. I'm really sorry about that, but they should be all shipped out, so they should get to you very, very soon. You guys are really amazing for your patience, for painting along with us tonight, um, for being here, and just kind of hanging out with us. We always have a good time. So if you posted, share it. We want to see it. And I know that sometimes we think, oh, this isn't very good. I'm not going to share it. Don't think that way, because that perpetuates the idea that art is perfect all of the time and it's not it's okay to post things that you're not 100 percent proud of or it's okay to post things if you're just beginning it's a journey we all appreciate it so tag us in it our instagram name is let's go make art or you can hashtag let's make art we have a wonderful facebook community super supportive so if you want to post it there and get inspired and see all of these things please go to that group. It's really wonderful, super positive, wonderful space. So you can share your work in there and then you can build up. And it's, it's really great seeing these people have courage and post it. And we have people saying like, they're just, they're so proud of themselves for doing it. And when, when we have the courage to do it, then other people will have the courage to do it. And I think creativity is important to take the time out for. So take the time to do that. You guys are awesome. Next week, we are doing our tropical sunset, so we'll release the tutorial for that tomorrow. And uh, I think that's all I need to say, right? Octopods have three hearts. Octopods have three hearts. We're going to leave you with that little... Any other facts you need to say before uh, we're it's done? It's two for pumping blood across their gills and one for everything else. And the one for everything else stops while they're swimming. That's why they walk. Weird. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There you go. Michael, thank you for being here tonight. I love having you on. Kenan, awesome Thanks. as always. always <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Bye.